brother appears unresponsive. Why don't you let me try? Ryan, do you need some eye drops? That's a no. So your eyes aren't dry, you just have nothing to say to me. Let's keep it that way. Harmony. Thanks, Samuel. It's okay. I have to admit, I'm surprised you're willing to see me. Last time I was here, you told me not to bother coming back. You can thank my better angels for a change of heart. One angel in particular. Does this angel have a name? What the hell are you trying to imply? I'm just wondering, are you sorry for Joss and Cam or are you apologizing for something more? Like what? Whoever recorded and emailed that video was in the cabin. And you've got the nerve to be pointing your crooked finger at me? Nobody's pointing fingers. No, I am. Right in her face. Once again, Joss, Spence and I left that night, but of course Trina probably doesn't remember much from that night. You were pretty out of it. Okay, there's gotta be an explanation to all this. Oh, there is. You guys were set up. Only one person at that cabin was twisted enough to give to Teddy Bear with Ryan Chamberlain's voice to an innocent child. Or torch Ava's car and leave her murdered daughter's hospital badge underneath it. Those were terrible mistakes. Mistakes? Because you have regrets or because you got caught? And now everyone knows what kind of soulless person you really are. I messed up. I don't know how many times I can apologize. Forever, I guess, but suggesting that I set up Joss and Cam, nice deflection, Trina. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. You have had trouble follow you since you first stepped foot into Port Charles. And now you expect us to believe that this disgusting stunt is somehow beneath you? Hey guys, let's just not do this right I don't now. wanna do this at all, Cam. And I'm sorry if this is making things harder for you and Joss, but Esme is coming for me and I'll be damned if I don't defend myself. No, you're right. Trina's not to blame here. I'm the one at fault. You admit that you're behind this? In a manner of speaking, I pushed for the weekend getaway and described it as a couple's trip, which made Trina feel like an outsider. Then I asked those provocative questions during the drinking game. It was immature and petty, and I'm sorry. Had I known it would push Trina over the edge? Oh, hell no! You haven't seen me go over the edge! No! Not when she's talking all this trash about me! I had no idea you had issues with anger, Trina. You always seem so poised. But if my psychology coursework has taught me anything, it's that sometimes the people who seem the most controlled have an undercurrent of behavioral dysfunction. Who the hell are you calling dysfunctional, you conniving bitch? You know, we both have a lot to answer for. I say like father, like son. Seems accountability is something we both struggle with, but I'm certain of one thing. You're the greatest gift in my life, Spencer. I planned to tell Courtney that today when I visited her grave. You visited Mom's grave? Because I knew you couldn't, and because I had some things I wanted to say to her. Like what? I wanted to apologize for failing you. You would have been so much better off had your mother had lived. I wanted to ask for help. What kind of help? Help being a better father to you. I didn't get a chance to say any of it because Sonny was there and despite everything going on with his own life, he was quick to point out the mistakes that I've made with you. Yeah, that sounds like Uncle Sonny. <laughs> I'm not his biggest fan, but he certainly cares about you. So do I. I know, Father. But what about Ava? Where does your wife fit into all of this? I'm surprised you chose Wuthering Heights. Although I guess it's not really a romance if you read the novel. It's about the price of obsession, isn't it? 